What's up WordPress nerds? In this video, I'm gonna be talking about five beginner mistakes that I commonly see when working with new WordPress developers. So hopefully you can find something in here that you find helpful. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to make sure you get notified of my weekly WordPress videos. Also, uh, we are about halfway to our goal um, as far as patrons go. So once we reach that uh, final goal, I'll start posting regular videos to patrons only. So if you haven't already signed up, I will put a link in the description. Much appreciated. But all right, let's jump into it. All right, so I wanted to talk about five beginner mistakes that I commonly see with uh, beginner WordPress developers. So the first one is uh, not understanding the template hierarchy. WordPress has a very specific way of determining what PHP template file to load when a user lands on a specific URL. So if you're landing on a custom post type page, it, should, it follows a few steps to figure out what template file to load. They actually have a nice graph on wordpress.org, which I'll link to in the description that shows this flow very nicely. I'll also link to the page that this image lives on so you can kind of read more about it. Number two is not reading the codex. So I browse the WordPress subreddit a lot, and there's a lot of discussion about um, figuring out how to become a better WordPress developer, or even like, where do I begin with, with WordPress development? And that question comes up at least once a month. And without fail, the top comment is a link to the codex. Um, and with that, with good reason too, there is a very good, um, resource for developers to learn how to, um, develop themes, plugins, use the rest API, the WP CLI, make Gutenberg blocks, all this kind of stuff. And it's really well written and it is pretty thorough. So, um, I highly encourage people to read this if they're having any questions about, uh, WordPress and how to get started with it. Um, and you'd be surprised on how many people don't know that it exists. So even people who have been working with WordPress for a little bit don't really understand what is there. They may know that it exists and you can Google it and it'll come up with, you'll, you can Google like a WordPress function and it's going to pop up in the results, but like exploring it further and kind of getting into these handbooks is um, less common. So I wanted to throw that out there. If you haven't um, already, I encourage you to take a look. Uh, next is uh, not using actions and filters to make your code extendable. So unless you are without a doubt the only person uh, that's going to be using this code, you should make it extendable or um, make it so that people can manipulate it or hook off of it with actions and filters. So these are things that allow other people to make changes to your code without actually making changes to your code, if that makes sense, to manipulate the data. And so they have, uh, well, WordPress has an action reference and a filter reference, which are the two main ways that um, makes it so your code can be extended by other people um, available on wordpress.org. So I'm gonna put links to these two pages in the description. I also have created a two-part video series that goes over actions and filters. So I will put a link to the actions one up top right now. The filters one follows it and kind of builds off of it. So that would, that's the next video in the series. After that, we have not using WP debug. So debugging in WordPress is as simple as declaring a constant in um, WP config. So you set WP debug uh, to true, and then all of a sudden, any errors that are you are are creating will pop up on the screen and yell at you until you fix them. So it's very alarming sometimes to like turn this on on a project that you're jumping into and just see all the all the madness that's, that's happening. So. Um, if you have this set to true as you're developing locally on your WordPress sites, you'll see these bugs pop up as you're making them, and then you can just fix them right there. And everybody's happier when you do that. So last, last but not least is not taking uh, security seriously. So WordPress, oh, I don't have it pulled up right here, but 
I can pull it up right now, theme security in WordPress. Uh, there's all sorts of things that you need to be aware of when you're developing themes and plugins in WordPress. Um, data sanitization, data validating, nonces, all this kind of stuff are things that WordPress is a, is a bunch of functions WordPress just gives you in order to help you make your site more secure against attacks. And so sanitizing your data, validating that data that's coming into your database, and then using nonces to make sure that the data or the submissions that you're receiving are intentional. All these kind of things are often overlooked by beginner developers because they're, it's easy to just kind of hand wave that and it's just like, it's not going to happen to my site. But I'll tell you what, I've definitely dealt with my fair share of attacks and um, security threats and all that kind of stuff. And it is just better to take the extra time to make your site more secure up front without having to deal with it after the fact and try and reverse it all. And then you end up having to write the, f the function anyway. So I just highly encourage uh, you to do that right the first time. So anyway, those are the top five mistakes that I commonly see. Hopefully you guys found that helpful. If you did, leave the video a like. If you're new here, subscribe. Um, I want to quickly thank all of my patrons who have been supporting me. We're about halfway to my goal of um, getting a, enough patrons so where I can start posting um, exclusive videos on Patreon. So if you're interested and you've been thinking about it, now would be a great time to do it. Uh, but anyway, anyway, I appreciate you guys watching and I will see you in the next one.